a breakout season full of explosive dunks, flashy dimes, slippery handles. It may have come to a close for the NBA's most improved player, Ja Morant. The Grizzlies star point guard has a bone bruise in his right knee and is considered doubtful for the remainder of the playoffs. That's what the team announced on Tuesday. And the Grizzlies said Morant had an MRI that revealed the extent of the injury. Memphis will be without their star guard for a second straight game as the Grizzlies try to avoid elimination against the Golden State Warriors at home in game five tonight. So we now welcome in ESPN injury analyst and senior writer Stefania Bell. Stefania, you're also a licensed physical therapist. For those of us that don't know, what exactly is a bone bruise and, and what makes it so severe? Malika, this is a very unfortunate name for this injury because you hear bruise and you think it's a black and blue. It's something you'd play through. But remember, when you have a bruise on your skin, that black and blue is bleeding. So when you have a bone bruise, it represents bleeding in the bone. It's an injury to the bone architecture on a very, very tiny level. But those trabecula, they're called, when they break, it's called a trabecular microfracture. That's actually another term for a bone bruise. So again, hmm. you can see on the picture, you get bleeding in there. It takes a while for bone to heal and bone has nerve endings. It is painful. So that is what makes it so severe. You have to wait for those symptoms to resolve before you can begin any kind of impact. Well, there's been so much chatter off the court in this series and, and Taylor Jenkins and others questioning that pool with that, that play with Jordan Poole rather. Is it possible to sustain that type of injury on that type of play? Look, I suppose anything's possible and without the benefit of the specifics of Jaws injury or talking to the player, which is actually how we collate information about an injury, it's hard to say for sure. But if you look at how he plays, high impact, he is explosive. And even earlier in that game, he did have a couple incidents where he bumped knees, specifically one time with Clay Thompson. Mm. We see bone bruises that often accompany hyperextensions of the knee when the knee is forced into a position beyond its normal range and the ends of the bones touch where they don't usually make contact, and that can create a bruising. So it, it, it's less likely that it happened on that play, but again, we don't know the specifics from here. In any case, it can take weeks to resolve, sometimes months if it's very severe. How would that impact a player with, with Jaws kind of explosive style here? We have to remember the bone is a weight-bearing structure, and so it really depends on the size of the bruise and the actual location of it. If it's Big, obviously it takes longer to resolve and if it's on a weight bearing surface then every time you're running every time you're going up for the ball every time you're landing you're impacting that area and so if it's painful you can be pushing through an injury that can potentially lead to a true fracture and that's why for a player who's as explosive and dynamic as John Moran is you really want it to resolve so you don't put him at risk for further injury. Stefania, thank you so much for spending some time with us and explaining that very complicated injury to us here on NBA Today. Really appreciate it. All right, I want to bring it back with the guys here, though. Your initial reaction, Kendrick, I, I think I heard it from my house when you were downtown when you saw that he's doubtful for the remainder of Yeah, yeah, you probably right. I passed out. I passed <laughs> and then out. The and then I was hurt. Yeah, I mean, because, listen, here's the thing, right? We're watching a guy that could possibly be it's the okay. face of the NBA, John Morant a superstar, a guy that was averaging 38. He's averaging 38 in this series, dominating the Warriors. Then all of a sudden, this happened. Uh, ahead, see, Rich. look, for me, one, I find it a little bit curious that they're saying that he's out already. This is like, if you're saying, right. I'm saying that to me, it, it's like, I know we've seen teams getting fined for different ways, and it's like, look, wouldn't you want to release this information, like, maybe before the game, or just have it doubtful and then say out for tonight. Because what you want to do in a game in a game like this is you want to keep the Warriors on edge. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to prep. I'm just saying. What, what you mean keep the Warriors on edge? Like, they didn't been to five finals. Though. No, it's but like, I, 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 it's I, no, it's no, not listen. edge. It's just like for, it's no, it's for, not, for yeah, preparation. Yeah. What do you? And so, so the yeah. Memphis Grizzlies are like, we should just announce this. They've been to five finals. No. That shouldn't be their mindset. We know that. Bro, it was his same leg. Like, this was – the same injury that but he why had. why announced it so early? Have I people, think the point people is... people getting fined by the NBA? But you don't have to announce, announce it this early, bro. Are they going to announce it sooner or later? Yeah, so later is better than sooner. Oh, if that's your argument, you tripping. It. As a journalist, I do appreciate the transparency from oh. the Memphis Grizzlies on this. But I, I do think, to your point, though, Richard, I was about to help you out. Never mind. Thank God. <laughs> do me a favor. Don't do me no favors. Done. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.